Honey, come on over here, sugar buns. This machine just called me an asshole. Honey, honey, sugar, sugar, sugar bun. Honey, honey, sugar, sugar, sugar bun. This machine just called me an asshole. This machine just called me an asshole. Honey, called me an ass, ass, honey, called me an ass, ass, honey. According to the internet's Maximum Overdrive is 1986 American Science Fiction Horror.com. Written and directed by Stephen King. The first thing right and wrong with Maximum Overdrive is the plot. The plot is absurd. It's going full mode insanity. You have a rogue comet, Rhea M, which has engulfed the Earth in its green, beautiful mist, kind of like an aurora borealis of death, that makes all technology come to life and attack humans. That is just one of the dumbest things I've ever heard of. It's also flipping awesome because you have technology attacking humans. Rolling out with number nine, we have get it done, get it done fast, just starting with the action. What you get immediately is a bridge scene where the bridge has decided to raise on its own and you get melon action. You have people falling over melons. This guy just... Oh, there's just sweet floors covered in melony goodness, so the guy pivots onto his face. You have just grandness going on. Guys are flying through windshields. These melons will chuck you off the bridge. This is out of control, beautiful. It's fun. It paints the stage for just chaos. And he goes kind of hard, and we'll get into that in just a second. But um, it just gets wild like that. And it leads to number eight. At number eight, we have beautiful interplay between these fine gentlemen. As you can see, the man on the left is picking his nose. And if we put it in slow motion here, you can see he's not only picking his nose, he flicks it right at the guy on the right. And if you look at that exact moment, the guy on the right's eyebrows kind of furl. So it kind of supports my theory that the man on the left has flicked the man on the right with a booger. So, he kind of deserves the thrashing he gets in a second. Here you get the best line in the movie. The older gentleman blows his lid and throws the young guy down. I mean, I'm surprised you didn't throw him off the ledge there. And then, of course, you get some more melon smashing, more melon goodness. At number seven, we have the actual Green Goblin truck itself. It's a pretty cool image. It sticks with the movie. It was used for many of the posters. It should be used for many of the posters. It really is an iconic image that sticks with this film. Of course, it's taken from the Green Goblin, the Marvel character from Marvel Comics. Um, you do end up having a great scene where Emilio Estevez is sneaking up on the supposed psychopath who is hiding inside the Green Goblin truck only to find a sentient jack-in-the-box. And when jacks-in-the-boxes can go sentience. Yeah, so apparently bikes don't go sentient, but the complex mechanics within a jack-in-the-box can run itself. So I'd be very careful about all this. I would worry about potential beatings from everything. I mean, who knows if the windows aren't going to attack you and fly out, or the walls might just decide to smash the piss out of you. But, you know, we're going to keep it with the original concept of mostly cars and electronic things. But that jack-in-the-box throws a little wonder in the mix, does it not? Coming in at number six, we have Go Hard. Stephen King was not afraid to go hard from having video games electrocute a man to having knives chase people across the floor, is Stephen King goes hard. Now, he did say, apparently, that he was coked out of his mind during this film, and this scene would kind of show that. Anyone who thinks it makes sense and is amazing to have a video game just shock a guy. Well, okay, let's do some more coke. Yo, mom. I mean, and to be totally honest, it does look awesome to have someone be electrocuted by an 80s arcade machine and chucked across the room. Now, here you see this kid's bike completely fail and whack him in the ass. Look close. It doesn't hit the grass. It hits his ass. Ruining that theory that bikes don't turn on their creators. Unless he just flipped out, sensed the steamroller coming, grabbed the front brakes, and chucked himself into its path. Lore-wise, apparently Stephen King put a bag of blood next to his head there. 
And when that popped open, it looked so brutal that the sensors made him take that out. I'm going to go ahead and say the definition of going hard is having a little kid run over by a steamroller just after a guy is electrocuted to death by a video game machine while you're coked out of your mind. Stephen King. The Going Hard Award. Leading into number five, we have the traveling salesman who is one of the most annoying characters in the movie. Yo, mom. He's shown early on trying to grab the girl he's given a ride to. He's just painted as a real creep, troll of humans. Um, and it's just great what happens. He is pummeled by the back of the green goblin truck, chucked right into the ditch. It is a grand scene. And later he wakes up in the ditch and starts yelling at everybody screaming for help and no one can figure out how to get out there and help him because a convoy of trucks has encircled them apparently no one has taught poor deke here that you poke a dead body with a stick yeah. Pull me. Pull me. i can't you're too heavy get me out of this ditch or by jesus i'll kill you of course, it's more going hard. Stephen King doesn't mess around. This guy is ready to kill this kid if he doesn't drag him out of the ditch. Of course, I think if push came to shove, Deke would kick the crap out of him and run. But, great scene. Which leads us into number four, the blonde waitress freak out. The waitress here decides to completely freak out after Bubba Hendershot finally has his own freak out that his car was smashed. Why did his car not come to life? Whatever, we're not talking about that. We're talking about her grabbing that rocket launcher and freaking out. Why would she think she can run out there and just yell at the machine gun toting Jeep thing and it's gonna just chill out and reason with her after it just shot the piss out of the whole place? It killed Bubba and like three other no-names. It's TV king does these things and a lot of people do these things we made you we made you and you understand you can't do this we made you acdc asked in the beginning you know who made who we made you who made who we made you she gets shot by the machine gun but it's grand to watch her have her little freak out it's a good time coming in at number three we have the increasing levels of violence against machines in the beginning humans don't really understand they need to be killing all technology but technology attacks humans all out so in the very start you have maximum levels of violence maximally overdriven levels of violences towards humans but as the movie progresses you get more and more violence and more and more brutal and insane and wild violence towards machines and this behavior is exhibited also by machines you get machines attacking machines later on which makes no sense but it makes me laugh so that's great when the humans run away from the Dixie Boy truck stop. They get out through the sewer, I believe, and the machines in retaliation decide to destroy the Dixie Boy truck stop. And there's a scene where a truck smashes into the video games, which these video games have already killed a guy. These video games have proven themselves loyal to the machine army and the machine agenda. So why would you punish the humans by smashing yourself directly into the video games? And then this other truck smashes itself into the hot dog machine and the coffee maker. And think about a knife comes to life. Uh, a jack-in-the-box comes to life, so the hot dog machine should be shooting hot wieners at people. It's a diesel gas pump that shoots a guy in the eyes with diesel. In the video games, that shock people. So it, it's killing its friends. It's killing the hot dog machine and the coffee maker and the cash register and all its friends. And then goes ahead and blows the entire place up. The humans are just fed up beyond. To the point now where they're just going to shoot at trucks and... It's gonna work. It's the 80s, the truck's gonna explode from bullets. But if you stop to steal a ring, the Green Goblin truck will come back and run you down and you get that final great moment of pure violence from Emilio shooting a rocket at the Green Goblin truck whose eyes turned red. And they used to turn red indicating he was communicating or mad or getting ready to kill or something. So I thought it meant he was extra pissed. Apparently he was just extra blown to piss. But it's great. It is increasing levels of prejudice and violence against machine by both man and machine. 
Everyone has turned on machine. You see what happens when you attack your creators. Everyone turns on you in the end, including yourself. Coming in at number two, we have the killer pot machine. It's a great scene which involves two nut shots. One was unplanned. The shot Deke takes here, I believe, was unscripted. And you kind of got to slow her down to even see it. So Deke's one at baseball here. And as all the kids run out, he jumps into the air. His crotch lands in this guy's knee. He's hit hard enough to be visibly thrown back three steps. As he's stepping back on his third step, this girl jumps up behind him and knees him right in the ass. The pop machine is pretty amazing. Stephen King does it later in the Tommy Knockers. I'm not sure if that's in the actual book, the Tommy Knockers. I didn't read that. And that's a very silly movie. I recommend this over that. Great scene. You get him getting shot right in the balls with a pop can. You get him shot right in the stomach with the pop can and then right in the head. The kids kind of just stand there and watch until the pop machine begins launching pops at them. And then they get the idea and run, but not before it takes out three kids. The Portlier lad on the right, he gets hit in the head. Number nine gets hit right in the butt. They all go down and we're led to believe these shots have killed them, honestly. And I think they have. Deke, of course, walks right up to the pop machine before saying, oh shit, covering his face with a mask, crawling down army style to his coach trying to save him. Deke is insanely brave. He figures out he needs to just book it. One of the best scenes in the movie, two nut shots and a killer pop machine. Followed, of course, by the steamroller, but we already talked about that. I guess at this point it's customary to talk about things that didn't make it into the video that people might have thought should have made it into the video. Yeardley Smith is in this, that's Lisa Simpson. She's entirely annoying in this in my opinion. ACDC provides the soundtrack and they do have that song, Who Made Who? It really is a great pick for this movie. Stephen King himself being coked out of his mind, being obsessed with living machines and trucks. Stephen King wrote a story called Trucks. Then he made Maximum Overdrive based on that story. Then people went and made trucks into a movie. That's three works based on living trucks. Then you get Christine, which is a whole novel on a living car. Then you get the movie for Christine. So we are now at five works based on living cars. It's too much coked out of his mind, obsessed with living cars. Um, these things are all honorable mentions, but they don't make it. Coming in at number one, the grand finale, the beautiful, the powerful, the best dialogue I've heard in ages. I don't know if he got to ad-lib any of this or if Stephen King made this up. Pat Hingle does an amazing job as Bubba Hindershot. What's hilarious is his name is Bubba and he literally calls everyone in the movie Bubba. He also is supposedly been running guns so he has a huge cache of munitions for these people to use against the machines he does a great job annoying the heck out of you i have to deliver these lines to you in clomped form they're just too good wouldn't be right to just play them so leave me alone fat fuck no underrated masterpiece if you're on the fence give it a try it's definitely worth your time nothing can top pat hingle there so we have to end if you enjoyed this format give me a comment i can do more like this every subscribe and every like is golden to me so please hit the like the subscribe ring that bell and i'll be back with more